Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, 20-Minute Alibi. Late afternoon in the office of the Acme Insurance Company. A telephone rings on the desk of Mr. Edward Phillip. Acme Insurance, Phillip speaking. Mr. Phillips? Yes? This is Mr. Prescott. Travis Prescott. I've got to talk to you about my life insurance policy. Yes, Mr. Prescott? I've been having trouble raising the money for the premium. How much more time have I got? Well, I sent you a final notice sometime last week. Yes, yes, you did. But what'll happen if I can't meet the payment? Why, after today, I'm afraid the policy will have to lapse, Mr. Prescott. Lapse? Yes. In other words, you won't be insured after today. Well, what time? Uh, what time is it now? By uh, quarter to five. And I have until midnight to pay the premium? That's right, sir. But if anything happened to me before, uh, I mean, the policy is still good now, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Prescott. Uh, Mr. Prescott, what happened? Mr. Prescott? Mr. Prescott! <laughs> well, congratulations, Ethelbert. How did the... When did all this happen, anyway? Last night, Casey, huh? uh, the bartenders were just having their regular monthly meeting, and they elected me. Oh, what do you know? Of course, I still think the reason so many people come in here is because they like to hear Herman Chittison play the piano. Mm, boy, you got a point there. Like my sister Edna says, quote, eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow you don't have to work. That is, if it's Saturday night. Uh, unquote. But you know Edna. Yeah, I know Edna. Hello, Ethelbert. Good night. Oh, <laughs> hello, Miss Williams. Hi. Hi, Annie. Pull up a stool. You're crazy. What do you have, huh? Not now, Casey. We got a job. Why? Uh, where? What's up? Man got killed over at the Milton Hotel. Shot in the head with his own revolver. Suicide? That's what Captain Logan's men seem to think. We better get over there right away. Well, what's the rush? Because I know you, Casey. If Logan says it's suicide, you're going to think it's murder. <laughs> Come on, Annie. We're going to have to shoulder our way through this. Gosh, there's enough cops in this hall to launch a battleship. Yeah, here, here, where are you going? Press, Commissioner. Gentlemen of the press. Her, too. No, officer, I'm a lady. It's all right, Dolan. They can come in. Yes, sir. Thank you, Logan. Well, old boy, it's awfully decent of you to let me solve this case for you. Now, don't start masterminding, Casey. This is a very simple job, and all you have to do is take pictures. Oh, the murderer has confessed, has he? The murderer has not confessed. There isn't any murderer, understand? This is a simple case of suicide, and let's keep it that way. Okay, okay. I didn't say anything. Maybe not, but you're thinking. Well, one of us has to think, huh, Logan? Oh, 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 don't pay any attention to him, Captain. He just got up on the right side of bed this morning. Well, he won't get up at all tomorrow if he doesn't watch his... Well, come on, come back. on. Where's the body, Captain? Over here, behind the sofa, right next to the telephone stand. Hmm. That's where you found him? I didn't find him, Casey. My men found him. What's his name? Prescott. Travis Prescott. He lived here in this hotel? No, oh, he was a salesman, lived uptown, and used this room as a sort of downtown office. Uh, watch it, Logan. What's the matter? Just taking a picture. Don't get scared. Uh, now, you can put your clod hoppers anywhere you want. Thank you. Say, what makes you think it's suicide, Logan? Oh, just a wild hunch. Prescott was found with a gun in his hand and a bullet hole through his right temple. Powder burns on the face proved that the gun was fired at close range, and a neat little suicide note was found in the carriage of his typewriter. Is that enough of a hint, Mr. Casey? No. Then I'll let you speak to Mr. Phillips. Uh, Mr. Phillips. Yes, Captain Logan. Will you please tell this gentleman that Mr. Prescott called you up at a quarter of five this afternoon, that he didn't have enough money to pay the premium on his life insurance policy, and that you heard him shoot himself while you were on the phone? Uh, now, wait a minute, Logan. You can't hear a man shoot himself. You've got to see it. Well, this was practically the same thing. Mr. Phillips was still in the wire when the shot was fired. Well, that doesn't mean anything. A murderer could have phonied up the whole setup to make it look like suicide. Use your head, Casey. If you wanted a murderer to look like suicide, would you kill a man while he was still on the phone? He's got you there, partner. Mm. Oh, okay, mastermind. You go to your church and I'll go to mine. Now, nah, just a second, Logan. Has anything in this room been moved since Prescott's body was discovered? You know better than that. Not when my tech men get finished. Then it's murder, my friend. 
Good old premeditated homicide. What do you mean? Look at the telephone, Logan. Didn't you say Mr. Phillips here heard the shot over the wire? But I did hear. Well, then if Mr. Prescott committed suicide, how did the receiver get back on the hook? Only one person could have hung up that phone after Prescott was dead, Logan, and that's the murderer. Now, wait a minute, Casey. I thought of that, too. It's just probable that Prescott put it back himself. Well, after he'd been shot through the head. Well, it's possible, isn't it? He could have staggered and dropped it back into place as he fell to the floor. Well, sure, sure. He could have played a violin concerto on the way down. So will you shut up? It doesn't make sense, Captain. Casey's right about this being murder, and you know it. I don't know anything of the kind yet. Uh, uh, Mr. Phillips, tell me... Did you hear the phone click after the shot was fired? Why, uh, now that I think about it, I... Yes, I am sure I heard a click, as though the receiver had been placed back on the hook. Oh, funny you're remembering it now. What do you mean by that? Nothing. I'm just passing the time of day until Captain Logan decides to start looking for some suspects. Yeah, how about that, Captain? Doesn't this Mr. Prescott have any friends or relatives? Yeah, he's got a wife. Yeah? Well, why isn't she here? Yeah, she probably will be any minute. I sent word to her just before you came in. What was her reaction to the news, Captain? Uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't the one who broke it. You can't go in there, that Logan. sounds Take like her now. Let go of me, please. It's all right, Dolan. She can come in. We were expecting her. Yes, sir. Where is the officer? What have you done with no, him? No, no, no. Just a minute, please. Is he dead? Is he really dead? Tell me. How did it happen? Uh, please, please. Uh, you've got to... Oh, the name of heaven, officer. Why are you keeping me from him? Why don't you let me see him? Travis! No, no, no. You, you oh, mustn't Travis, go. Travis, darling. Well, for Pete's sake, will you take her away from the body? No, no. I love it. I love oh, it. I know how you feel, but you've got to pull yourself together now. Well, let me stay with him just a little while. Don't you understand? I love him more than anything in the world. Well, I, I'm terribly sorry. I know it's a shock to you. Oh, it's all right. Only I can't understand why anybody would want it. Who killed him, Robert? Who killed him? Why, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure he was killed. Captain Logan thinks he might have committed suicide. Oh, but that's ridiculous. He had everything to live for. He told me so this afternoon. But you saw your husband this afternoon, Mrs. Prescott? Husband? Yeah. Aren't you his wife? Why, no. I'm Evelyn Warner. I'm Mr. Prescott's secretary. <laughs> Casey walking right up to Mrs. Prescott's apartment and ringing the bell. What do you expect to find out from her anyway? Shh, somebody's coming. Yes? Uh, oh, excuse me. I thought this was Mrs. Prescott's apartment. Uh, it is. Uh, I'm her father. Lane is my name. How do you do, Mr. Lane? Is Mrs. Prescott in? Yes, but if your reporters... Well, we won't stay very long, Mr. Lane. We just want to ask her a few questions. Well, I, I appreciate that it's your job, of course, but really we've been hounded by so many reporters this evening... Uh, can't you come back at her some other time and instead of bothering Mrs. Prescott again tonight? She's been through so much. Well, we'll miss the morning edition. If yes, we... yes, I know, but couldn't I answer your questions for you? After all, the police have been here and the whole terrible shock of Mr. Prescott's it's death... It's all of... right, Father. You can let them in. But, Helen, I'm sure it's I... It's all right, Father. What's the use of pretending I'm upset about Travis's death? Everybody knows how he's treated me. Helen, I think it's a mistake oh, to... Oh, come in. Come in, won't you? Let's get these press interviews over once and for all. Well, we'll make this a short one, Mrs. Prescott. Thank you. Helen, I, I think you're giving these people the wrong impression of... What's the good of... of keeping up appearances? It's all over now. Once I can really act the way I feel. You sound as if you were almost glad your husband is dead, Mrs. Prescott. Don't say that. I, I'm not glad. But I'm not sorry either. Huh? See, I've been hurt so much these past few years, I... I'm just sort of numb about it. Does that seem very cold to you? Well, frankly, uh, a little. Well, maybe it is. Then you didn't know Travis. You didn't know the pain or the heartache he could bring to those who tried to love him. He was a scoundrel. Really, he was. Uh, I hate to say so now, but he treated Mrs. Prescott abominably when he was alive. Hmm? In what way, Mr. Lane? In every way. He drank, gambled, spent my daughter's money. He spent it on other women. Women like that secretary of his. Oh, you know about her? Yes. She wasn't the only one. <laughs> A little fool. He didn't care any more about her than he did about me. You think she might have killed him? Mm hmm. If she was in love with him. Anybody who was in love with him might have killed him. Including you? 
I wasn't in love with him. Well, it doesn't really matter very much. The police think he committed suicide. Who, Travis? Not in a million years. My father's right. Travis wouldn't take his own life. He was much too fond of living. Then you think that he was murdered? I'm sure of it. By whom? Any ideas? That's something for the police to figure out. Hey, look, try to remember, will you? After all, you're the doorman here. You ought to know what time Mrs. Prescott came home this afternoon. Well, I do remember, but I don't know that I can pass that information along to you. I've already passed it along to the police. But we're practically policemen. Show me your press badge, Casey. And will you stay off my side? We're, we're confusing the guy. I'm not confused. I know when Mrs. Prescott came home. Oh, yeah? When? About a quarter past five. Quarter past five, huh? That's just a half hour after her husband was killed. She could have done it, Casey. Only takes about 20 minutes to get here from the Milton Hotel. 25 at the outside if she came right over. Mm, that's just what I was thinking. Say, tell me, Mac, did she come home in a cab? Mm, yes, I believe she did. Alone, or was she with her father? Oh, no, she wasn't with her father. Mr. Lane came home at least half hour earlier. About a quarter to five. No, just about. Maybe a few minutes before. Yeah, well, that lets him out, but it doesn't make it any too cozy for her. Well, thanks for the tip, old man. Here's one for you. Much obliged to you, sir. Come on, Annie, we've got work to do. Well, wait a minute. You don't have to yank me off my feet. Where are we going? Back to the car first. Gee. Then we're going to drive down to... Say, wait a minute. What's the matter? Quick. Get up against the side of the building. I've got to flash that dame in the lobby. She's coming out. What dame? Who's coming out? Shh. Mrs. Presk. There she is now. Look how she's dolled up. A nice time for her to be getting about. Where do you suppose she's going? Keep your eye on her, Annie. We may have to tailor. Look. She's getting into that parked car on the corner. For Pete's sake, get ready, kid. We're going to follow that car. Why? Whose is it? Don't you recognize the guy behind the wheel? That's Mr. Phillips, the insurance agent. Casey, we'll both be killed if you keep driving this way. Don't worry, Annie. I've still got two wheels on the ground. Well, let one of the others down anyway. Right. We're coming down for a landing now. Stopping up ahead. I wonder why. Everything looks closed up around here. Where are we? Downtown. Near River Street. These are all office buildings. Wait. They're going inside that gray one on the corner. Well, don't give them a chance to get away. Come on, Annie. We got to find out what they're up to. Not so fast, Casey. I got high heels on. There's no time to call attention to your legs. We're in a hurry. Oh, don't be so manly. We'll catch up with them. Well, if we don't get a move on. Well, there they are. Going in that side door off the lobby, see? I hope they're not trying to give us the slip. That's what I hope. No, it looks like some sort of office on the first floor. Hey, there is an office. Oh, oh. Acme Insurance Company. Hmm. I'm going to find out what they're up to. Easy now. Mr. Phillips might be back there with a gun. Come on. We'll take a chance. Don't tell me you're going to hold my hand. Just across the threshold. There. Now you're on your own. Hey, what the... Take what? it easy, Casey. Logan! What be... Captain Logan! What are you doing here? Minding my own business? No. What are you doing? But, uh, now look, Logan, don't be like that. We've been following that Phillips guy and Mrs. Prescott. They came in here a second ago. Didn't you see them? Yes, I saw them. I sent for them. You what? I sent for them, Miss Williams. Well, it's about time you got wise to yourself, Logan. Are they in this thing together? Did they cook up some kind of scheme to kill Prescott and collect his insurance? Well, uh, not exactly. Not exactly. Well, what do you mean? Come on, give. What have you got on them? I just asked them to come down here so I could have a look at Mr. Prescott's insurance policy. Aha! Good boy, Logan. That dame is suspect number one on my list. Mine, too. She had motive and an opportunity to commit the crime. Where? Tell me about it. At a quarter to five. When Travis Prescott was murdered, too. And she didn't get back to her apartment until one half an hour later. So you figure she was with her husband at the time of his death, mm -hmm. sure? Well, as a matter of fact, she wasn't. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, she's got an alibi, I suppose. You said it, Casey, an airtight one. At a quarter to five, she was at a bridge party uptown with over a dozen witnesses. So she couldn't have killed her husband. Uh, no, I guess not. Then who did? I don't know yet. I've still got an idea it was suicide, remember? Yeah, I remember. Suicide or not, Logan, if you let that woman put one over on you, you're a sap. She has everything to gain by her husband's death, including that nice fat insurance policy. Well, the policy may be fat, but it won't do her any good. Why not? Because she's not the beneficiary. Mr. Prescott left the money to Evelyn Warner, his secretary. <laughs> What do you 
want, Mr. Casey. Well, I'll tell you, Miss Warner, if you'll just take your foot away from the door and let us come in. No, please. I'm awfully busy right now. Can't you two come back some other time? And find you gone? Why, no, of course not. What makes you think I was going anywhere? Don't you dare come in here. Why? What are you hiding? Nothing. Nothing but a half-packed suitcase. I can see that from here. Go away. I will in a minute, Miss Warner. Come on in, Annie. Like you are. Big idea, sister. But you know it's bad news to run away at a time like this? It's practically an admission of guilt. I don't care what it is. You mean you killed Mr. Prescott? No. According to what Logan tells me, you were at the office with him this afternoon. Of course I was. I was his secretary, wasn't I? I was there until 4 o'clock. And where were you after 4 o'clock? Trap. Mr. Prescott sent me out on an errand. And why are you so anxious to get away now? Because I know what'll happen. They'll send me to the chair for something I didn't do. If you didn't do it, you've got nothing to worry about, Miss Warner. But all the evidence points to me, the insurance policy, the fact that I worked for him, even the fact that I was in love with him. There's only one fact that really counts. Can you prove you were not with Mr. Prescott at a quarter to five this afternoon? No. The only man who could prove it for me won't help me. Who's that? Mrs. Prescott's father, Mr. Lane. He knows I wasn't at the office at a quarter to five this afternoon, but he'll never tell the police that. Why not? Because he hates me. I'm sure he does. Any man would hate me for breaking up his daughter's marriage. Oh, but he wouldn't send you to the chair for it. Besides, Mr. Lane doesn't strike me as the kind of a guy who'd blame you for what happened. He would. I know he would. I can't take a chance. You can't take a chance because you killed Travis Prescott. No! You'll have a hard time convincing Stand him... Stand back! Hey, what are Look you doing out, there Casey, with it? She's got a gun. Stand back, both of you. I know how to use it, and I will if you get in my way. Don't be an idiot. You can't get away with this. We'll see about that. Close my bag. Quick! Now, put it on the floor and stand back. You're a chump to walk out of here with that gun in your hand. I'm not asking your advice, Mr. Casey. Just don't move a muscle till I'm outside the door. Stand just where you are. I'll take that gun oh, if you Mr. please. Mr. Lane! What's the meaning of this, Miss Warner? I was just about to ring your bell. Hold her, Mr. Lane. I'll take care of that gun. Let me go, you stupid fool. Let go of me. Thank you, Miss Warner. You might hurt somebody with that thing. What's the matter here? What has she done? Plenty, Mr. Lane. Murdered your son-in-law and tried to make it look like suicide. She just gave us a cock and bull story about you being able to fix her up with an alibi. I don't understand. Didn't Mr. Prescott die at a quarter to five this afternoon? That's right. Then how could Miss Warner have killed him? Huh? What do you mean? Well, Miss Warner dropped some mail off for me at the apartment this afternoon. I was with her at almost exactly a quarter to five. <laughs> Casey, you've been sitting there for the last 15 minutes without opening your mouth. What's the matter with him, Miss Williams? To put it in simple language, Ethelbert, Casey is what we might call stuck. Oh. Uh, does that expression on your face, Casey, mean that you're thinking? Yeah. Give me another cup of that coffee, Ethelbert. Awful stuff. Oh, uh, Walter, bring Casey another coffee. I told you it was awful. You know Walter can't make coffee. You're telling me. <laughs> Annie, I give up. As far as I can make out, nobody was at Mr. Prescott's office at a quarter of five this afternoon. Well, at least Mr. Prescott was there. I'm beginning to wonder. <laughs> Boy, if he was alive, he'd probably have an alibi, too. Maybe Logan was right. Maybe it was suicide. Hmm. Certainly beginning to look that way. Only there's something awful fishy about that phone call. You think Mr. Phillips is lying? I don't know. He's got plenty of witnesses from his office. But there might have been some shenanigans at the other end of the line. Oh, say, uh, uh, Ethelbert, if that's for me, you know what to tell him. Right, Casey, you know me. Excuse me, folks. Hello, Blue Note, Ethelbert speaking. Deposit five cents, please. Yeah, wait, I'll have to get... Hey, wait a minute. I just picked up the phone. If you'll give me your name and address, we'll return your nickel. But I didn't put in a nickel. You should deposit five cents before you dial. Please hang up and dial again. Hey, look, lady. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Goodbye. Hmm. Must have been a wrong number. A blue note. Ethelbert speaking. Wrong number. Excuse it, please. I thought so. 
Oh, dear, these telephone operators. I have more trouble... Hey, wait a minute, Ethelbert, you know, wait, wait a minute, you, you give me a hunch. Huh? The telephone operator, Annie. Hmm? That's who I want to talk to. Come on. Where are we going? Back to the Hotel Milton. I want to talk to the operator at the switchboard. Milton Hotel, just a moment, please. Now... What were you saying, Mr. Casey? Well, uh, we wanted to have a look at the call sheet, miss. You keep a record of all outgoing calls, don't you? That's right. Are you from the telephone company? Uh, no, no, not exactly. But, uh, look, if you'll do this little job for us, we can get your picture in the paper. See, si, see, si, he's got his camera and everything. Yeah, here it is, right here. Well, what do you want to know? Oh, just how many calls Mr. Prescott made from his room this afternoon between half past four and five o'clock. Half past four... Five o'clock. Mm -hmm, that's it. Did he make any other calls beside the one to the Acme Insurance Company? Between half past four and five o'clock? Yeah. Gee, that's funny. According to the sheet, Mr. Prescott didn't use the phone at all during that time. Last call he made was at four o'clock. Let me see that, will you? Sure. Casey, what's it mean? Annie. It means we're dealing with a pretty slick murderer. That phone call Mr. Phillips got wasn't made from this hotel. That's so. What's more, Prescott didn't even make it. His voice was impersonated by somebody else's after the murder was committed. Yes, but, but Here, it... hold on to this sheet, Annie. Okay. We've got to get in touch with Logan right away. Operator, will you call headquarters, please? And... Hey, hey, who turned off those lights? I don't know, but somebody slipped into this room, Casey. I saw the door close just as... Oh, Casey, help me! Yeah. Somebody grabbed the call sheet out of my hand. He's got the list of calls. Don't worry, I've got oh, him. I... Uh, quick, turn on the lights while I hold him down. I'll find the switch, Mr. Casey. Now we'll see who murdered Travis Prescott. Mr. Lane. It's all right, Mr. Casey. I won't try to get away. Go ahead and call the police. Okay, Mr. Lane. So you killed your son-in-law? Yes. I had every reason in the world for killing him. After the way he treated my daughter, he, he didn't deserve to live. I made up my mind to kill him when he tried to borrow money from me to meet his insurance par p p policy. Policy that would only benefit that, that secretary. After you shot Prescott, you went back to your apartment and called up Mr. Phillips, the insurance man. You impersonated your son-in-law's voice, and while Mr. Phillips was still on the wire, you fired a shot for him to hear over the phone. Yes. I tried to make it look as if Prescott had died at a quarter to five, ah. because I was already at home at that time, with a perfect alibi. When did you kill Prescott, Mr. Lane? At exactly 25 minutes after four. Ah. That gave you a perfect alibi, all right. The only trouble is it gave everybody else one, too. Okay, Annie. Call up Logan. Well, you see, Ethelbert, it, it was a perfect alibi. I don't see how it's so perfect if the guy got caught. Well, he wouldn't have been caught if it hadn't been for our man Casey. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, Annie. Logan was onto that call sheet long before I was. He had a photostatic copy of it the whole time. Well, then why didn't he do something with it? If this Lane guy hadn't followed you to the hotel and made that pass in the dark, he'd have been a free man. Oh, not necessarily. No, Logan was playing the whole thing cozy, letting it pass for suicide and keeping an eye on all the suspects all the time. Well, if I ever commit a murder, I'm not going to make it fancy. Oh, why not? Well, you see what happened to this Lane guy. He should have known you can't commit a murder and make it look like suicide. Why? Because any man that commits a murder is committing suicide at the same time. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation. A great name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Dietz. Tonight's episode was written by Robert Sloan. The original music was by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Leslie Woods as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. 
Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations.